Well, you've seen straight path segments, and we just saw how to work with curved path segments and creating closed curved objects. I hope that made even just a little bit of sense. Hopefully that's kind of putting you on the, the right path, no pun intended. So what I want to do now, actually that pun was intended, is I want to move down to working with these combination paths. This is down at the bottom of our sample file. So working with these combo paths. So go ahead and zoom in on this first guy here. Again, this might look insanely complex. It isn't insanely complex, but it's definitely more advanced than what we've been doing so far, because now what we're doing is we're combining curved and straight path segments together to create different objects, different shapes, right? So this first guy here is gonna have a straight path, and then he's gonna have a curve in the middle of him, and then back over to a straight path segment. So how do we pull this off? Well, it's actually relatively straightforward. Let me show you this. I'm gonna start off on number one. I'm gonna single click, that creates the anchor point, of course. I'm gonna go over to number two now. Now I want this to be a perfectly straight line, right? So do you remember how to create a perfectly straight line? I'm gonna hold down shift and click. There we go, there's that first segment. And then what I'm gonna do, check this out, is I need a direction line coming off of the second anchor point. I need it to go up to this red dot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my cursor over top of the second anchor point. And notice, by the way, right beside my cursor, right beside my pen nib, there's a tiny little wedge, a tiny little arrow there, almost looks like a slice of pie or a slice of cake. Now you might not be able to see this wedge beside my icon, but you'll definitely be able to see it beside your icon on your screen. What we wanna do is make sure that that guy is present and then click and drag upwards and voila, we now have a direction line coming off of the second anchor point. So I'm gonna bring this guy all the way up to the red dot, just like that, okay? Perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my cursor over to the third anchor point, by the way, if I can just rewind for a second, this direction line here that we just dragged out sets the direction for the curve, right? We know that from the previous exercise. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my cursor over to the third anchor point, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag down to the blue dot, just like that, okay? Wonderful, perfect. Now, if I were to bring my cursor over to the fourth anchor point and just single click, I'd actually get a line that's bowing or curving down because we have this downward direction line coming off of the third anchor point. So I actually need to break my teeter-totter or get rid of this extra direction line. How am I gonna do that? Well, this is a neat trick that we can use. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my cursor over top of third anchor point. Again, I get that little wedge appearing beside my cursor, beside my pen nib. I'm gonna single click. And what that does is that deletes the second half, if you will, of the teeter-totter, the second half of the direction line. So now he's gone. So now I'm gonna bring my cursor over to the fourth anchor point. I want a straight path segment, so I'm gonna hold down shift and single click, and there we go, there's our object. So again, it's a little bit more complicated. We're getting a little bit more advanced here, but as you can see, we can create paths that make use of both curved segments and straight path segments, okay? It's just a matter of practice. It's a matter of getting used to, again, how the pen tool is thinking, okay? So there we go. That's the first guy. Now, the second guy, I mean, you might just want to pack it in. <laughs> I don't know. This is getting really complex because now what we want is sort of this dovetail effect happening here or almost this sort of wavy line happening here. Let me walk you through it and I'll try and break it down for you as simply as I can. What we're gonna wind up doing is we're gonna wind up not deleting half of our teeter-totter or our seesaw, but actually breaking it. It's kind of cool. Let me run you through it first and then maybe what we'll do is I'll run you through it a second time if we have enough time here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the first guy here I'm gonna click and drag upwards to the red dot, just like that. Okay, that sets the curve, right? Don't forget. I'm gonna go over to number two, but rather than clicking and dragging straight down, which would give me sort of an even arc, notice that the arc is kinda 
lopsided. It's kind of leaning to the left. So what I'm gonna do when I click and drag is I'm gonna click and drag in the opposite direction over towards the right to give myself an arc that leans to the left, okay? So I'm gonna click and drag down to the blue dot, in other words, just like that. Okay, now this is where things get funky and weird because what I wanna do is I now wanna break my teeter-totter. I don't wanna delete this second half of the direction line. I wanna break it and I wanna drag it up to the green red dot, which is gonna set the curve for the second segment. So how do I do that? Try this, try holding down the Option key on your Mac or the Alt key on your PC side and notice that your cursor now changes to that wedge icon, that little slice of cake or slice of pie. What I can do now is I can click right on the end of that direction line, that little tiny dot on the end of my teeter-totter, and now I can click and drag up to the green dot, just like that. So I just broke my teeter-totter, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll bring my cursor over to the last spot there, number three, click and drag down to the yellow dot, just like that, okay? So this one, of course, is much more complex because we're working with a broken teeter-totter, a broken seesaw, it's kind of weird and wacky. Let me do that for you one more time really quickly. I'm just gonna undo a bunch of times to go all the way back here, there we go. And I'll do this one more time here for you. It does take practice. Click and drag up, that sets the curve. The curve is leaning to the left. So when I click and drag down, Rather than dragging to the left, which would create something like that, I mean, maybe that's something that you want, but instead I'm gonna drag in the opposite direction. Really, the pen tool, it's all about opposites, okay? There we go. Now, the most complex part, breaking the seesaw, breaking the teeter-totter by holding down Alt or Option and clicking and dragging on the dot on the end of the direction line, just like that, okay? And that creates that dovetail effect, okay? And then over to number three, click and drag straight down, just like that, okay? Controller command click away to deselect. Now, I'm not expecting that you get this right off the bat. It takes lots of practice, lots of patience, lots of coffee, but keep at it because again, it is really worthwhile to know how the pen tool works, to know how it functions. And something that I haven't mentioned to you yet is if you master the pen tool in Flash, you simultaneously master the pen tool in Photoshop and also over in Illustrator as well. It's the same tool right across all three applications, which is great. There's minor differences between each application, but by and large, it's the same tool right across the board, which is great. Now, I want you to spend some time practicing with the pen tool, getting comfortable with it. When you're ready, let's move on, and I want to show you how to go about manipulating your anchor points.